G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Before we begin today's video, I would just like to give a quick shout out to Better Than Jam, who is a uh, viewer of mine who donated $45.69, nice, to uh, me via PayPal, so I'd really like to thank him for that, and I'll find a way to put the money to some good use. Maybe I'll put it towards an SM7B, or a nice mic stand, or maybe a new graphics card when the time comes. Uh, maybe even new monitors so we can go to 1440p, but we'll have to figure that one out later when the stock issues are uh, sort of addressed and, and there's a bit more on the market and the prices aren't as ridiculous. Now, speaking of ridiculous, saddled to a skyrocket. That's what it was described to be flying in the English Electrical Lightning. The RAF pilots were blown away by its acceleration and by its speed, and that's probably because the plane that they had flew in, flown in before that was the Hunter, which is a big, fat, slow thing. Well, it's not really that slow, it's, it's actually kind of quick, but uh, it doesn't accelerate as quickly as the English Electric Lightning. These afterburners are pretty, pretty chonky. You can see this whole plane is actually quite big, and that contributes to it in War Thunder being quite frustrating to fly. I don't see many of these around, and I don't see many of them doing particularly well, and that's because the English Electric Lightning requires a special type of Papega to fly and I am the man for your job. This particular plane is just as ridiculous as the Javelin and just as ridiculous as the Scimitar Mark I, the flying bathtub. This thing is basically a flying bathtub as well. It's even got a full beer belly to go with it where it stores its aid and cannons. So with this plane, it's not an easy plane to fly. But I'll tell you what, when you do get the right matches, when you do get teams that don't fall apart, this plane is an absolute joy to fly in the right circumstances but i will say this plane can also be extremely frustrating and those of you that watched my live stream the other day know all too well because i was flying the lightning and i was getting frustrated these are a couple of the good games that i managed to record but do keep in mind that this plane needs to be played extremely well you can't muck around you can't just sort of do whatever and get away with it because this plane requires a lot of discipline and a lot of sort of knowledge about everything. It is, it is a very advanced plane to fly. So, speaking of advanced, I make a little bit of a rudimentary mistake here, and as you can see, F-11 sitting below me. Now, if he has missiles, he can easily burst up and missile me. Of course, I am traveling way too fast to uh, be hit by an AIM-9 if I'm paying attention, and the F-11 decides he wants to continue straight, which is a smart move. He has got a MiG-19 behind him and needs to get into the dogfighting mood, and he's also got a missile heading straight for his booty hole. So, this F-40 was about to also have a missile as well, but got close enough and slow enough for me to use the guns, and of course preserving a missile is always a good thing when you can afford it. So, English Electric Lightning, straight, nice and, uh, nice and quick, and that's exactly what we're doing here. We're going to avoid this A-4E here, and this F-86F, and once I realize that they are no longer a threat, I'm going to basically turn around and uh, check my targets out. So, what do we actually have here that we can do some damage on? What I'm looking for is someone that I can easily missile, or someone slow enough to use the guns on, but here I'm basically flying straight down at an enemy, so I'm not really going to be able to do either with the red tops. So now I have a little bit of a window of opportunity that arises. The F-100 is either blacked out or concentrated on the other planes in its uh, behind and I managed to get myself a red top. Now, with the red tops, you have to be fairly well disciplined about them. You can't just sort of spray them or send them off from three and a half kilometers and expect them to land because these missiles are very, very, very chonky. This Everything about this plane is just chonky. It's got chonky missiles. It's got a chonky belly. It's got chonky engines. Everything about this plane is just massive and, and very fat. But that's okay, because it doesn't come without its uh, benefits. And one of the benefits of the Red Tops is it's almost a guaranteed kill every time you land a hit. The only exception is maybe if you get an unlucky crit on, say, a MiG-19's tail, you might, in that circumstance, only get away with a critical hit. I have only gotten a hit with this missile once, and that was probably due to something really unfortunate happening. But anyway, I'm going to be continuing along looking for these F-100s. Unfortunately, the brute misses, but that's okay because I can roll around, the F-100 is distracted, and instead, of, I'm going to get distracted by this other F-100. You see, I'm debating on whether I should send a missile on the way, 
but I don't because these missiles don't have the range that other ones would. It's got a fairly short burn time for an air-to-air -air missile, and of course, I only have two, so I don't want to waste them. I want to get as many kills as possible with as much ammo as possible. So, in order to do that, I have to be extremely conservative about my missiles and, of course, about my uh, ammunition. You only get a little bit of them, and of course, the guns are mounted a little bit below the fuselage, and they're also mounted um, underneath at the bottom. So, you have to lead a little bit further than you otherwise would for something like, say, a Hunter or a Venom or a Mirage or anything like that. Um, although the Venom has 20 mils, it's got them underneath the nose, like the chin of the cockpit, the chin of the, uh, the nose, if you will. So, what you have to consider is where those guns are placed. Now, because these guns are placed so far back, you've got to give them a little bit more time to head towards the target. So instead of them perhaps going at 600 meters, they might actually be leaving the barrel at 610 meters. So you've got to give them a little bit of extra lead. And that really does make a difference when you are, say, 600 meters away or, you know, even super close up, it does make the difference. So F100 here is basically screwed. He's got a couple of enemies behind him, and of course the lightning is a little bit faster. It has a bit of better, I think, top speed acceleration, and I think it is better at altitude, but I'm not entirely sure. So what I'm going to do here is force him into a turn by closing the distance, and then do a little bit of a spray, of course giving as much lead as I might need. Maybe if you need to, tilt the guns up the top to help you lead a little bit, but those first shells struck beautifully and get myself kill number four. Now. We're in Korea again. Now this map is pretty damn good for the lightning. For some odd reason, I tend to do really well on this map specifically. Now, have a look at the Yak-38. He is heading straight towards the uh, the bases and straight towards some other allies. I'm not gonna go for him. The smart thing to do here would be to leave him alone. You can see that I'm twirling my wings to see if he's gonna take, take me on, if he's gonna come towards me, because I don't want an R60 up my booty hole, so I'm going to turn towards him if he does choose to engage me but he doesn't, and so I continue straight. This allows me to gain more altitude and more speed, because remember, whenever you turn, you bleed speed, and speed is your lifeblood in jets, especially this one, which doesn't have the maneuverability to fight things like the MiG-19 or the Shenyang F5, or in some cases, even the Yak-38. Like, you can sit behind a Yak-38, but if a Yak-38 is behind you, you're pretty much toast, and there's not a whole lot that you can do. But not only that, there are plenty of other planes at this battle rating that just outturn you every single time. The only thing that is close and you're basically going to outturn every single time without fail is like an F-104. And even then, they have fairly high acceleration, so you have to be careful around them. So, speed is your lifeblood in this thing. It is meant to be fast, it is meant to be chonky. So, the Chonka does fire off some rounds at this MiG-21 PFM, and I manage to turn around a little bit, thinking that he's just going to continue down. He doesn't, so you know what, I'm just going to book it down for the deck, get as much speed as I can, and hopefully make a go of this little furball here. I'm going to line up the shot here with the G91, and unfortunately my cursor goes off at the wrong time. So it's time for guns, 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 and we shear the wing off the G91. Moving on from the G91, we have the Shenyang F5, and the Shenyang F5 has managed to turn his way out. I'm not going to launch a missile at point 0.6, not this red top. They are a little bit chonky at that distance. The best distance is about a meter, maybe a meter, no, not a meter, a kilometer, maybe 1.4 kilometers is probably your, like, guaranteed area. Now, in this case, what are we going to do? We've got most enemies that are preoccupied by another allied plane, and in this case, we're going to look for the easiest target to missile. This MiG-21 here looks like a juicy target, too hard to reach for guns, so we're going to go with a missile, and there we go. There's missile number two, done and dusted. No, missile number one, done and dusted. Missile number two being prepped. Well, who are we going to spend missile number two on? Well, we want to get ourselves a guaranteed kill with these missiles. You don't want to be fart asking around getting speculative kills so we're gonna take on someone who is a little bit preoccupied the MiG-17 AS realizes just too late that he has an English electric lightning coming up behind him and he gets taken out by the missile which is a really really lovely little kill on top of that saving the J-32B which is always nice now I have got a gentleman who is fairly common or always always pops into my uh, twitch chat in my team and he's going to be giving us a little bit of help. It's uh, Robo PL. you'll see him there in the F-100. 
just off in the distance. So, we're going to have a look and see if we can get some kills. Maybe he can bait some for us, maybe someone can bait for him. We can see. So, Robo is heading up and it looks like the F5 is taking a little bit of interest in him. I think Robles made a mistake, or he's just baited really, really beautifully. I have to really pull to lead this shot, and I managed to squeeze out the fourth kill. Robel now gets a little bit of a reward here, where we're going to be going into a little engagement with the Yak-38. We're going to squeeze off a quick burst, pull off before he shoots, and continue straight. It looks like the Shenyang Gang Gang is going to go for me, and then decides not to, and does some funny, like, not ahead on stuff. But it's okay because there is an AIM-9E heading straight for his booty, giving us a lovely 4 kill plus a bait. Now, all of these have been almost relatively full down tiers. Um, what if you get an up tier? Well, here's how you do it. These particular matches are very grueling for an English Electric Lightning. You can't be the one to take all the hits. You can't be the one to sacrifice your life for Pakistan because unfortunately you're going to come off second best every single time. The English Electric Lightning is, mind you, in this case, in a full up tier. And of course, planes in a full up tier are not as good as they are in a full down tier. So you have to play them like you are in a full up tier. So what do you do in a full up tier that is different to a full down tier? Well, you have to be mindful of the enemies that you're facing. We're going to be facing things like MiGs. We're going to be facing things like maybe, uh, in this case, we're going to be facing Phantoms. And Phantoms have AIM-7Es. So, what do AIM-7Es do? You know, Phantoms climb up to altitude and use the AIM-7Es to lower the opponents slower and slower back to the, to the ground. And by that time, they all become energy trapped and then that's game over. So, what you do is you do some heckin' zoomies around the side of the map and come up behind them where they're not looking and while they're busy tending to MiG-21s, you simply booty blast them with either Aidens or you smash them up with the Red Tops. So, I've managed to find a target here on the radar, and what I'm doing is I'm using my uh, keys to select the radar target that appears with the two bars along the side. These are targets that you can lock, and that's what I'm trying to do here. If I can get a lock, I can slave the radar and maybe get myself a kill, but I've noticed that this F4C is coming in way too fast, and I'm never going to let that red top fly without it tracking like absolute dog shit. And I can see. Both of these targets here on the radar are basically heading towards me extremely quickly. They are closing the distance and the red top is not even going to be able to track, let alone follow through with a kill. So I'm going to be sparing of my, uh, of my missiles and I can see there's a target here in F100 and it looks like he's AFK climbing. So these are really, really easy kills and maybe he just didn't spot me. It, maybe it was just the spotting system. But once I'm done there, I look around because I know there was an F4C sitting behind me. And now he's closed in the distance, he's going to come in. And we're going to be doing a uh, little bit of a weird ass dance. So I've noticed that he's not going to commit completely to the turn, but he is going to eventually circle back, and I need to be careful when he does so. In the meantime, I can fire this uh, red top here to go for the F100. The F4E Phantom 2 decides he wants to go out for a bit of a fly, and the F104 wants a quick head on. Now the F100 does get clocked by that missile, and now I have a little bit of a situation on my hands. I have an uh, F8U, and I have potentially F4Es and F4Cs coming out behind me. Dodging an AIM-9D here, the AIM-9D, whilst it's burning, is not as maneuverable as you might think, because it is picking up speed, and so it uh, compresses, I believe, as I understand it. The R60 does the opposite. Uh, it bleeds all of its speed really early, so if you turn a little bit, it helps. And if you multiply that, you can turn one way, rot rotate your wings 90 degrees, and then pitch the other way. That gives you an even easier time to dodge missiles, and I've always used that. You can see me using that in videos, actually. So. What I'm going to be using here is a nice little red top. The F8U is nice and slow, and hopefully this means that I can pick up a nice little kill. It seems like the F8U does manage to get away scot-free, but it looks like he's a little bit slow and a little bit up to something. He might be air braking, he might be uh, doing some funny stuff, but I don't even have time to slow down to engage him because there's an F4C. Now the F4C, if he's good, he can sit on my ass all day and have nothing to worry about, but because I've got teammates around me, he's not going to be able to do that. But I have to try and help out this Harrier, so I'm going to try and turn around very, very gently using the arrow keys or the uh, 
the WASMD using my, my keybinds rather, um, I'm going to try and bleed as little speed as possible in order to get around and dodge the uh, F104. Uh, now, I don't know why I got hits there, it makes me a little bit upset, but I'm going for a quick head-on, and now it's a little bit up, up shit creek without a paddle. The F8U is a fairly good turning plane, but it does have really high acceleration, so if he's not playing his cards right, which I don't think he is, I'm going to end up in a little bit of a pickle. He goes for a quick head-on, I miss, he misses as well, and it looks like we're going to go into a quick little dogfight. If I can get this guy before the F104 comes in, or after the F104 comes in, I think I'm going to be golden. And as I dodge the F8U, uh, the F104 comes in, completely misses because I've set the angle up wrong for him, and I believe a Phantom comes in as well. And this allows me to get a really nice reversal on the F8U. Putting my air brakes away, putting my flaps away, I immediately pick up speed, because speed, again, is your lifeblood in this plane. I have to pitch up a little bit to get out of the way of this F4 Phantom, but as soon as I know that I'm free from him, put that nose down, get the hell out of here, because this F104 is going to provide some real pain if I do not pull my finger out of my ass. Now, as you can see, I'm coming in close, I'm going to pitch a lot, as hard as I can, to try and throw him off, and I managed to throw him off. Now, he's basically on the defensive, because I'm behind him, but he is so much faster than me. The F4 as well is in a similar spot, and the F104 decides to run back to the F4. This gives me an opportunity to work with my teammates a little bit more closely, and the uh, friendly there manages to kill the F4 Phantom, leaving the F104 as uh, the lone survivor. So, we have F104 and F104, and El English Electric Lightning. In this situation here, because the F104 is left without a team, he's basically, like I was earlier, up shit creek without a paddle. This time, he's got no one to bail his ass out. So, it's a lot more difficult for this F104, and I'm going to try and catch him when I'm in the clouds. So, what I'm doing here is just going to roll over, head straight back towards him, and I don't think he sees me. I might not be spotted for him. Either that or he may have just given up. I do a little bit of a long brute, I critical hit him, and he bails. So, that is basically how you do it. Now, in most cases, you might be fighting MiG-21 Bisses, you're not going to have an easy time. You have to try and catch these guys when they're on the, uh, with their pants down, basically. You can't go for dogfights, you can't pick fights with them, because you're just gonna lose. And that's just the way it is when you're fully up-tiered, especially with Missile Thunder. If you think of playing a Yak-30 or an F2 Banshee back in the day before top tier was afterburners and missiles, well, you'll remember how hard it was, and that's kind of the same thing. But there are ways around it, and of course, the English Electric Lightning in a full down tier is pretty damn capable. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you don't mind, I'd be very grateful if you left a like and a comment just for the algorithm. And of course, take care. And I'll catch you next time.